I would begin at home. A wise man once told me that that was the best place to start any charity. If I planned to turn these fields into organised farms, then I would need to make sure I was fit and healthy myself. Feeding the world is a strong ideal, as is putting an end to the famine, but to begin with, I needed to make sure I myself would never go hungry. The kitchen at my home was getting very old, and my little food farm was starting to slow down each season. I started working on a major update, and created myself a much more efficient and practical sandwich area. Now then, welcome back to another episode of A Druid Tale. I have spent many hours. I've even recorded an episode already, and I've scrapped it all. I've played many hours and scrapped it all. This is what I've ended up with after what was going to be episode 30, but now you're watching the episode 30 that's going to be. I have been trying to adapt the original farms that I installed, the original progressive automation stone planter, crop planter type things, tried to uh, just like incorporate the exact same design and then do all the machinery around it and changed it all around. And this room has become an overcomplicated mess of things. Uh, well, it's not really messy. I tried to keep it as neat as I could. But the main issue is the wooden mattocks. Just getting mattocks into the machines. Because uh, they only have 100 durability. And uh, then I've got to repair them. Now, Progressive Automation is a very good mod made by Van Hal, a friend of mine who I've not only played on servers with and done videos with, but also seen at Minecon in, when it was in London, 2015. And I really like his mod, but I'm going to rip it out now. I think it's a, an early game mod. I think Progressive Automation is perfect for early game and for mod packs that don't have other things in them. Uh, but as soon as you get to the sort of the forestry stage, we've got forestry farms out there which are super efficient in comparison. Over at the village, we've got the MFR, Mine Factory Reloaded Farms, working perfectly and smoothly and everything's good. You just give them a bit of power. These guys, they just need a little bit. Well, they can take RF, but they also just take in the charcoal that I'm producing. These things are taking the charcoal I'm producing. Everything's working in here. I just think I'm getting over the top with it when I don't really need it all. I don't really need all of this going on. So I think I'm going to rip it all down and start again. Uh, I had to come up with a solution to fixing the um, fixing the Mac talk. I think that's the biggest downside of progressive automation is having the actual tool slot. So the tool wears down. It's okay early game because you manually come to these farms and you sort them out manually. But later on when you want advanced automation like I do, it takes an awful lot of doing to get the the, the thing changed. A vanilla axe or a vanilla, a vanilla tool isn't so bad. But in this mod pack, we've got the tinkers. And so I've got to use tinkers mattox to do the hoeing because a normal hoe won't work. Right? So, uh, yeah, we're kind of kind of stuck at the minute with the idea here. Uh, I had some repair wood, and we were using this crafting table with transfer node and world interaction upgrade to pull out fixed uh, mattox. So broken mattox would go in there, and I had to be very careful with the mattox because I couldn't have any skill XP on him. They had to be zero XP. So I had to make them all fresh and then let the farms use them. Then they didn't you put skill XP on them because the farms were using them. So then all four machines had exactly the same broken mattock at the end of it with exactly the same ID. So it would go into this place here from all the piping and stuff going around. And then of course this wooden barrel, this barrel with wood in here would get sucked by the crafting table and the crafting table would repair it using the uh, extra utilities auto crafting method and then that would put the last bit down into this sorting chest and that sorting chest would then put it into here and then the repaired wooden mattock would go in here the trouble then was distribution i got 
four of the things that it can go into. And it also, it will go into this slot here. You can actually put your wooden mattock in that slot there. And it goes in there and it takes time to come out and then you get it stuck in a place. Yeah. So the fresh one. So I can only have four wooden mattocks in the system and I had to do a sort of a looping system so that if a mattock went into the wrong slot, like if a mattock went in here because this was already full, then it would get sucked out, put back into the system and go into this barrel and then get sucked out to try again. So it's a one in four chance that I'd actually find a, a machine that needed the wooden mattock and it would keep cycling through until it found a home. And uh, that was going to be pretty annoying. But I'd fixed it, I'd solved it, I'd done it all, recorded it all, and I was going to show you guys how it all goes together and all that kind of stuff. But when I'm not going to use it, it feels like a waste of time, a waste of effort. So I'm going to rip it all back down again and start changing it around. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'll see you in the take two of episode 30. Alrighty then, well, as you can see, I've demolished the area and sorted things out and uh, changed the farm around completely. Now we've got a similar sort of farm set up as we have over at the village over there. We've got um, harvesters from Mine Factory Reloaded down here that are harvesting the crops and sending them out this way. This is uh, keeping up, yeah, sending them out this way. And same here, I've got two setups sorted out this way. So they're constantly harvesting in a large area, so I've got lots of crops here. Some of these crops are better than others. Some of them are better than others, but uh, the peanut crop is possibly the best. And the peanuts grow faster that way, because they've got to keep up with all the fruit that we've got. We've got four types of fruit, and therefore two rows of peanuts that give us extra peanuts. Uh, yeah, it'll make sense in a bit when I start making the sandwiches themselves. Um, we had similar sort of thing before, but I've got a few more crops now. And also I've set up a little, like, agricarnation like we have over at the village to uh, get us a supply over here. And I figured as I was rounding it off, I would even it up with a few uh, day blooms that can also add to this mana pool. I think we found out that the Hydroanger was enough to power the agricarnation one for one basically so it would be an infinitely working environment for me without needing to worry about topping it up but i've added these two little sections in a day blooms just to fill that mana pool a little quicker so if i run out of mana over that side i can always come and use this mana pool if i want to and that'll make sure the the agricarnation is always working I've also got the sound mufflers to stop it making all that silly noise that it makes. And it does seem to reach all the way to the edges over here. So all of these crops grow quicker. Yeah, there was some in that corner you may have just seen. All of these crops grow quicker because of that. Uh, so uh, put the glass roof on the top. And I just wanted to finish off here now I've set up this little section. I've had it going down on the outside so we can see that the farm's working at a glance from downstairs. Uh, it should be filling up and working fairly quickly uh, so we should expect to see things going down there quite often yeah look it's, it's doing quite a lot now so it's sending the crops down which I've used these item ducts that are see-through so I can see items traveling that way which makes it look cool so all of the items are coming down through this item here uh, item duct here I'm not so keen on the fact that I can see the sky from here uh, I've got to get a thermodynamics cover or something to cover that over a little bit and maybe cover this one over as well but I'm not sure how to make the thermodynamic covers yet I don't even know if you can but everything is now assembling in here and I've included tea into the little mix because tea is an easy easy process to make so we're going there now I've got to process it all I've got charcoal coming in from the farm going up and over and into the top here that's going to the two survivalist generators, one each side, and also giving me a lot of pipe still spare for sending charcoal into the Steve's workshops. And I've got wheat coming in from this side, wheat coming in over here, which I need to turn into bread at some point. I'm now trying to decide how to get this as close to uh, 
compact as possible. Try and make it as compact as possible. So let's have a look at what we need to sort out. I think what I want to keep in here are the berries. So I want all the berries to stay in here. I want to process sugarcane. So let's work that out. And I want to process peanuts. And I want to process tea. So those three things need to be taken out of this chest. And I can, can think only of doing it in an item filter transfer node sort of way. So, let's get these trans item filters changed. We'll have an item filter no longer for that. We'll have that for sugarcane. We'll have that one no longer for that. We'll have peanuts. And that one no longer. It's for tea. Okay, so we've got tea got sugarcane and we got peanuts okay that's good let's put those up there so I can remember where they all are right so I've got a charcoal supply immediately above so I could put a production table right there and then have charcoal going in so we'll upgrade now we'll transfer fuel from the top side so that should input fuel into there now uh, eventually when it starts thinking about sending charcoal to that place and we could have another one this side uh, yeah 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 we can do this side and have that transfer set to fuel from the top side as well there you go it's, that one's filling up straight away this one not so much it has got a fuel source there though um, <laughs> I can't break the thing that's got a tag on it though. Let's remove that and see if that will fill up. Yes. It just had a blockage. That was all. It had a blockage in the pipes because I almost joined some of these pipes together earlier so I'd change that around. So both are now receiving fuel from the top. That's good. That's a good start. Let's do that side there and let's make that one take only peanuts. So we'll take that back. Thank you. And so peanuts are going to come out in into here so peanuts into here and what do we do with peanuts we craft them so we'll have a crafting upgrade we'll make it an auto crafter and we'll also uh, auto transfer it out okay and then on this bit we're going to take juicer and peanuts to make peanut butter so this needs to be set on the crafting table to receive from the bottom there we go and now it should start receiving peanuts uh, we may need to do an auto transfer for an input there enabled there we go yes yeah, now receiving peanuts so it's doing peanut butter into there nicely okay and that should continue just putting peanuts into there taking peanuts out of there putting peanuts into there that's good okay and then we're going to transfer out from the front side that's going to be an output enabled and if I put a transfer node on there is that receiving yes it is okay so that's taking peanut butter straight away that's good so now we've got a, a simple system to make peanut butter on this side we may as well have a simple system to craft up the uh, sugar cane so let's put an auto crafter in there and I'll put that in there as well so I can auto transfer it and we'll put that on the side there with the sugar cane filter so it will only take sugar canes in there we go and this will be main and it's just basically changing sugar cane to sugar there we go alrighty and the problem I've always had with sugar cane to sugar is that sugar can also be turned into caramel so if the sugar cane production is faster than the uh, fruit production then we end up with sugar only and instead of all the rest of the things which is not so hot but still and i'm going to need my crafting bench there for the extra utilities before we get too too far ahead of ourselves right now what else Let's just set these up. So we've got the transfers item input from the bottom. 
So we've got enabled, there we go. And that's bringing in sugar cane and turning it into sugar. And we want output on there, which is enabled auto transfer. That should then start putting the sugar into that. Okay, so we've got sugar in there. We've got peanut butter in there. Awesome. So next up, let me show you the recipe for a sandwich. So we get a sandwich and recipe for a sandwich requires the peanut butter, requires this blackberry jelly and requires a cutting board and bread. The blackberry jelly is simply a saucepan with the berry and some sugar. So the saucepan berry and sugar is the next thing that we're going to do auto crafting wise. And we're going to do that from under here. So this is going to be set up so we've got berries in here we want sugar as well so let's get the sugar uh, we just need normal chest for this one there we go so we'll have this on this side and we can have the trap chest go here for the crafting recipe that we're going to be putting in there okay and then I'll put the transfer pipe to transfer the sugar into that chest there Maybe, just maybe, I should change that to a barrel so I can see how much sugar we've got. Let's do it that way around. It's a sorting barrel. I don't really need a sorting barrel. Just a normal barrel. So I'll leave that for now. I can see that it's there. Sugar going into there. That's good. Okay, so sugar's going into the right place. Yes. Put that sugar in there as well. That's going to keep processing the sugar cane to make sugar. And the sugar's going to come out into there. Perfect. And all the sugar cane should stay out of this place. Very good. Okay. Then we've got berries in here. Sugar. And we just need the saucepan to make the berry jelly stuff. The saucepan's there. And we'll go for one, 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 one redstone torch. And we'll invert that to inverted. And we'll change that to be caramel. So it's inverted. So it will not allow caramel to go out rather than it will only filter caramel it will not allow caramel and that should sort that problem out so that will now not pull caramel but will pull any other crafting recipe so if i put this into here now the saucepan uh, that's now got sugar the saucepan and fruit and that should make us the berry jelly this part of this here yeah those three so all I need to do now is add in the world interaction upgrade to make that actually start crafting things. And here we go. Okay, so crafting jelly. Yes, it is. All right, so any jellies will get crafted there, which is good. I want to actually put that somewhere else, though, so I don't want it right there at the minute. But that is that stage done. So I can get rid of this and this and drop down here now. Right. So now we've got the next bit, the recipe. We've got the peanut butter jelly, we've got the jelly, and we need bread and a cutting board. So the bread's easy enough to do, isn't it? The bread's easy enough to do because that's just three wheat. I could go through the process of turning it into flour and turning it into all other bits and pieces, but I've got space to do that later if I want to. Okay, so we want a production bench, and we'll have it here. We'll have the wheat coming across here to the front side and we'll tell it that it can uh, get the transfers. So we'll put a table in, we'll put the crafting in and we'll put that in there. Okay. Now transfer wise, it's taking fuel from the top again. So that's an input for the top and it's going to take wheat from the side and that means we're probably going to bring it out of the bottom so the bottom's going to be an output there we go and then we can go on here with a filter right so you've got the main there yeah that's good so let's get one two three and set up a, a little thing here for that it's already filled up with charcoal that's good so one two three making bread there we go so it will keep filling up with wheat and making bread and the bread will come down and go into this transfer node. Good, good. All right, so that's that. <clears throat> so we've got the bread, we've got the fruit juice, and we've got the peanut butter. 
So next up I need to combine all those together in another crafting grid to make the whatever I want. So the reason I've done it this way is because all of these fruits are available in here. All of the fruits are there. So any fruits that it finds it will craft into the jelly. Right, so it's already doing raspberry jelly there, that's pretty good. Blueberry jelly, yeah, so it'll just find whatever fruit it can. And in the same respect, I'm going to have many different types of jelly that it's going to need to craft from. Jelly, the bread, and the peanut butter all going together very nicely to make the sandwiches. So I guess I'm going to have to put that in over here somewhere. Let's see about where though, because let's go with a 3x3 three three here with a crafting grid in the middle and that should give me that run through easy enough yeah I should be able to bring this across and bring it to this corner maybe so that it goes up there yeah and just fill that in so it won't mix up nicely there we go and put some steps up okay so now I've got this in the way, but I've got sand above it, so I can't mess about with that too much. Let's let's go up here and stop that from connecting. And put a chest, bring it over one more, and then put that down there instead. So that will then bring the juice, uh, the jellies into here from down there so that'll produce it and bring it up here without going back into that one yeah we'll take that out put that into there there we go that works and then we need to get the peanut butter which was from over here and I actually need a, a barrel for peanut butter because I've got so much of it already in stock somewhere in fact where did I put the peanut butter stock there it is so much peanut butter already in stock let's have it so that we're facing which way we've got to bring it over from that output that output there has got to come across so it's going to go from there could actually bring it that way but that means that i'm going to lose something in the process no i'm okay because i've got this board underneath all right so let's take that all the side out. See, this is what I went through in the first take of the episode. Trying to get it all sorted for you in the first take. But I was all over the place and then I found out that it didn't actually work properly. So it sucked. It's big time sucked. Okay, transfer node on here. Go into that and bring that across one to go into this chest. No, I was going to do a barrel. This barrel here. Uh, I don't really need the barrel to show me anything, but let's have it showing why not this way, yeah, and put the peanut butter in there. So now this should transfer out peanut butter into there once I've reset that thing to be on its left hand side output instead. So we'll get that selected and we'll get rid of that. So left hand side or right hand side? Which side does it show? It's got a little like detail work next to it. Mm, it's the that side, okay. Looks like that one, the left side. Your right side when facing the front, okay. And that's gonna be an output. So we should be able to output over here and that should start filling up. Yes it is, okay. We'll grab the rest of this quick, empty all this out and a load more thank you perfect okay so we've got all the peanut butter we've got all the peanut butter in the world i had so much over producing of peanut butter before it's ridiculous okay so we're making peanut butter we're making all of the jellies there we go next up then i need to bring the bread across and how am i gonna get bread across here um well this is making bread so i only need to actually thread a cable across I could potentially thread the cable across under here and then go up into this section here don't think I've got anything there have I no I've made that so I can't see it from any other side but still I'll put a trap chest there now nah, I don't need a trap chest let's put a normal chest just there there we go 
and that gets that done and then we can have this running underneath it all like this I just need to make sure that this doesn't connect to there so it's not going to interact with that at all for now to make sure that we get the bread on the go does mean that I've got a few more cables than I was intending but I might be able to find a cheaper way yeah there we go we're getting the bread coming in now that's good and just check in the sugar is only sugar we're only getting blueberry jam thingy yeah we're only getting the blueberry jam it's not going anywhere now though because i changed this to be the wrong kind Let's change it back to that is that now going through yes it is and it's not making caramel which it could do with some sugar in there and a pan all right so we should now have the three components. We've got the peanut butter, we've got the bread, and we've got the jelly. So the only other thing we need now is to put a trap chest on here. So that we can put the chopping board in it. Uh, that one, yeah. Now, if you've watched my uh, pre-season, you've seen all this kind of work in beforehand. But... This is the first time I've done it in the actual Druid's Tail season. So, uh, yeah, live and learn and all that kind of stuff. This is how I did it the first time around. But I've just changed it up and sort of upgraded it this episode. Now, I need to put another World into Action upgrade there. To make it a proper crafting. And then it'll craft whatever juices or jellies come into the system it'll craft everything into the sandwich awesome okay next up then we could have we could have our refined relocation start working so let's get these and these and sorting barrels we can quickly just put a sorting barrel on the side here uh, well let's put it underneath it mm, I don't want to sort that out though do I so let's put it here I can't open it because that one's above it but I can take that one out now yeah it's putting the sandwiches in there that's good okay so we've got the sandwiches being made sandwiches being sorted the jellies being run down that's all good and then this can come to this section here where I can put these barrels up in this area so I've got my wall of um, wall of sandwiches ready to take very quickly when I need them so any particular order I don't think so raspberry can go just there and uh, apple jelly oh that's an extra one that I haven't processed here let's put that there I've got to be careful not to connect to that so let's put some of these down I'm going to not connect to that there but I'm okay to come across in any other way shape or form I want so we've got this one. Let's... Can I go up one? I can actually go up one. Okay. So I can put some in here as well. And we've got six flavours that I know of for sure. But I also have a few others that I'll be doing occasionally as well. So that one there. And that can go there. And then we'll have another sorting barrel there. And a sorting barrel there. And just... For now, just fill in the gap around it like that. There we go. Yeah, I'll fancy that up a little bit later on, probably. Fancy it up as we go in. So this is now going to disappear when I place it back into the inventory. Yes, there we go. And that's all sorted out. Blackberry, blueberry, apple jelly, and raspberry. But there should be a strawberry as well. Why have I got no strawberry? Maybe it's waiting for sugar. Maybe it's waiting for sugar. I don't have any spare sugar. I do have some raspberry there, though. And some apples and the like. Right, before I set this up to change what I've been doing so far, right, I'm going to let it run for a little bit and try and get some more sugar in there. It's probably the sugar from the sugar cane that I've got the problem with missing. Yeah. So if I go and get some more sugar for sugar cane... I should be fine. Uh, let's get another two stacks of sugar. And turn that into sugar right now. 
that's easy enough done and that should make another few from this section here this was the sugar section wasn't it is that making sugar yeah this is the sugar section let's put those in there that should make a load more jellies out of them i thought they all did make the jellies yeah it's making the strawberry now that's good it's making them now that's good and these raspberry ones i'm pretty sure it makes those as well yeah it makes them out of all of them makes them out of all of them any of them the lot of them that's good okay not to worry then not to worry that's all that was wrong with it and now i can fill that back in okay well that is pretty much how it works that is pretty much how it's going to go that's how it's going to roll the only things I should have here, strawberry jelly sandwiches are now nice and new. I can put them in there. So when I want to fill my lunchbox, I can come along and I can just get very berry sandwiches. Very berry sandwiches. Lots of very berry sandwiches. And uh, munch down on them as I'm wandering around. There's at least the first five snacks there that I can fill my lunchbox with. Five different varieties of sandwich. And not forgetting that I've got tea here as well, which is, uh, well, it's, there's not a lot of space left, but there's tea available for me to pull power from up there, maybe, and cook the tea automatically in a production table furnace, and then go from that and see where that leads me. All right, well, that is it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. It's been a kind of a weird one, I know. Let me uh, pop round here. It's been another one of those kind of weird ones where I've been just talking to myself, mostly while I'm trying to figure out a complicated setup for automation of my sandwiches. It is that simple. That is my sandwiches. I could have the resources going in and I could be making sandwiches by hand but I much prefer to have them constantly being made. So I just pop home, fill my lunchbox, and then head back off to wherever I'm going. The lunchbox is a lifesaver, and being able to very quickly fill it just makes my Minecraft experience much, much better. Oh, the days when you can just eat steak all day, every day. But no, not the druid, not in a druid's tale. I must eat fruit and peanut butter jelly sandwiches. That is the Druid Diet this time round. Thank you very, very much for watching, all of you. I'll see you in the next episode of A Druid's Tale.